Who better to ask, who better to talk about this with than the man closest to Biden, White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain, in his first interview since the Afghan crisis erupted earlier this month. Ron, thanks so much for joining me on the show tonight. I would argue that I represent most Americans today. I support the withdrawal from Afghanistan. I think the war was a disaster, but I also think the withdrawal could have been done better. It wasn't quite the extraordinary success that the president claimed today. Polls suggest Americans agree with that view. How would you grade yourself? What score out of 10 would you give the White House's handling of this exit from Afghanistan? Many, I'm not gonna put a number on it. I think that we should ask the 124,000 people who were airlifted out in the largest airlift in U.S. history, one of the largest airlifts in world history, in 17 days. We should ask them how they feel about the uh, work, the amazing work of the men and women of the armed forces, of our coalition partners, of the pilots who flew civilian aircrafts in and out of a war zone, essentially. Uh, we should ask all them how they feel about this evacuation effort. Uh, I think it was a historic effort. Obviously, it was an effort that was also marked by tragedy, uh, the loss of 13 service people, 20 more injured, uh, the loss of 100 Afghan civilians uh, when a suicide bomber uh, detonated himself outside the airport. Uh, so I think it was a, uh, a, a mission that saved a lot of lives, that uh, evacuated a lot of people, a lot more people, I think, than anyone expected we could in this period of time, but obviously uh, suffered heartbreak and, and setback. Ron, I want to play to you the president's words from July, from just last month. Have a listen. The Taliban is not the, South, the North Vietnamese army. They're not, they're not remotely comparable in terms of capability. There's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of a embassy in the, of the United States from Afghanistan. It is not at all comparable. That was a mistake, was it not? Not just in hindsight, but at the time. Or did you really have no clue at the time, no intel then, about how quickly the Taliban would take back power? Well, I will say that uh, in July, the Taliban had not yet con uh, conquered a single provincial capital in the country. As General Milley has said, uh, I don't think there was anyone who thought they would go from having taken no provincial capitals to marching into Kabul in 11 days in August. Uh, we certainly knew uh, there were threats and dangers of the Taliban on the march. Indeed, when Joe Biden uh, became president, the Taliban had taken or was contesting 50 percent of the countryside. Uh, president Trump left us with the Taliban in its strongest military position it ever was, but uh, since 2001, of course. But the point is that uh, Kabul itself, uh, the president uh, had uh, substantial troops. Uh, that army uh, lost the will to fight, and the president uh, fled the country. Uh, and that's what led to the rapid fall of Kabul. Yes, I think Ashraf Ghani has to take uh, a lot of the blame here, which has been overlooked by, I think, some in our media. There have been plenty of hawks criticizing the withdrawal, uh, and I've been critical of them on this show for several days now. I think they're out of their minds, to be honest. But I want to give you a chance to respond on behalf of the White House, the president, to some of their criticisms. Here's former National Security Advisor under Trump, General H.R. McMaster. Have a listen. And of course... Uh, what's sad about it is uh, th this war ended in self-defeat, Chuck. I mean, we had a, a sustainable uh, effort in place uh, several years ago that if we had sustained it, we could have prevented what's happening now. But instead, what we did, Chuck, is actually we surrendered to a jihadist organization and assumed that there would be no consequences for that. And we're seeing the consequences today. General McMaster says this is a self-defeat and you surrendered to a jihadist organization. Well, as President Biden pointed out today, it was General McMaster's boss, Donald Trump, who signed an agreement with the Taliban to uh, uh, end uh, active U.S. military operations there, to withdraw our troops by the 1st of May, to uh, release 5,000 Taliban prisoners as part of that agreement that the Trump administration signed with the Taliban. And so when Joe Biden became president, he had simply two choices, either to go ahead and honor that agreement and work out a way to get our troops out of Afghanistan, or substantially increase our military presence and get into a shooting war in another country's civil war, which, as we later learned, uh, that country's own army had lost the will to fight in. So the, the hypothetical that General McMaster poses is belied by the re reality of what the Trump administration did and the reality of the facts we inherited when we got here on January 20th. Rod, will the United States be recognizing the Taliban as the government of Afghanistan anytime soon? 
I don't think anytime soon. I don't know if we will ever recognize their government. What we know is that the Taliban is, says they're going to form a government. We'll see what that looks like. We'll see what kind of credentials they present. More importantly, we'll see what their conduct is. Do they honor their commitments to allow freedom of travel? Do they respect human rights? I think the question of recognizing uh, a new government in Afghanistan is down the road here. Full disclosure to our viewers, I wrote an op-ed for msnbc.com today uh, praising the withdrawal and saying I agreed with Joe Biden on this decision. But I, I'm in a minority, it seems, in my industry. It's not just journalists, though. It's not just Republicans or generals criticizing you. Some House Democrats, according to reporting from The Washington Post, are also criticizing you and suggesting either National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan or Secretary of State Antony Blinken should fall on their swords over what they say is a mishandled evacuation. Can you rule that out tonight? Are Blinken and Sullivan's jobs safe? Uh, I think the jobs that Jake Sullivan and Tony Blinken have done, uh, both in the run-up to this event, but most importantly, these past 17 days, to put help put together with, of course, our great military leaders, this uh, airlift operation to get people out of this country quickly, to get them uh, on their way to uh, third uh, country destination points, and on their way, ultimately, many of them to the United States, has been exceptional. It's easy to second guess. But let's just be clear, America was in this war for 20 years, and I think any effort to unwind that, any effort to bring our troops out, any effort to end our military presence yes. in Afghanistan was going to be filled with uh, heartbreaking scenes and difficulties. And I think uh, the Biden administration has managed that as well as it could be managed under the circumstances we were placed in. I think it's undeniable this war was never going to end in a clean way, and anyone who thinks that is deluded. Uh, Ron, we are out of Afghanistan officially, and as I say, I for one applaud the president for that. It was a bold move in my view. But the president said today we'll still be doing over-the-horizon counter-terror operations. On Sunday, our drone strike is believed to have killed 10 Afghan civilians, seven of them children. Surely we can't just carry on with these drone strikes, which I know Joe Biden is a supporter of. How can we just blindly carry on with the same strategy when seven, den seven dead kids as we leave that country? Well, so, Matty, we, the Pentagon's announced they're going to do a full review of what happened there and why there were civilian casualties, if that report is, is true. What we know is that ISIS-K was operating uh, in Kabul. They had killed, as I said, 13 Americans and 100 Afghan civilians uh, just two days before. We knew they were uh, plotting to launch uh, more suicide bombers, uh, vehicle-based explosive devices, and we were trying to protect not just our troops, but of course, first and foremost, our troops, but also the innocent uh, Afghan civilians around the airport. And so uh, the military did what it needed to do to protect those uh, troops, to protect those innocent Afghan civilians. Uh, and we're going to have to see exactly what happened here uh, and why there was such a large explosion. One early report said that the vehicle that was struck uh, had substantial explosives in it, and those explosives might have been what caused these other casualties. But we're just going to have to get to the bottom of it and be transparent about that. Of course, that's not what the family members who've been interviewed say. But yes, we definitely need an investigation into our drone strikes, killing civilians. My time with you is up, Ron, but indulge me one last quick question. The Wall Street Journal is reporting today that an Afghan interpreter named Mohammed, who's hiding out in Kabul and who helped rescue then-Senator Biden in a snowstorm in Afghanistan in 2008, has this message for him. Hello, Mr. President. Save me and my family. Don't forget me here. Has President Biden seen this story about this interpreter? Do you have a response for Mohammed tonight? Uh, I don't believe the president has yet seen it. it broke late this afternoon. Uh, we are going to try to get every person. Now, I read in that story that he did not uh, finish the SIV process because of some complexity with his employer. It doesn't matter. We're going to cut through the red tape. Uh, we're going to find um, this gentleman whose name is a, an assumed name in that story. Uh, and we're going to get him and the other SIVs out.